Up to this point, when we've been using the calculator to solve all the problems of finding the probabilities and then working backwards, given the probabilities to find values of z and values of x, we've been able to rely quite heavily on our calculator. At this point, however, you need to start using the formula. Okay, the z equals x minus mu over sigma formula, uh, because you can't solve these problems on your calculator directly. So it's important for all students that they know this formula and are able to recall it. Okay, because it is these situations where it will become necessary to use it. So we're going to have a look at part A here. So what we've got in both of these situations is we don't know the mean, but we know the variance, and we've been given a bit of inf extra information. So with this first one, let's draw a diagram so we can see what's going on. The mean is in the middle, so mu1. And we know that to the left of 31 is an area of 0.8. Well, if the whole thing's an error of 1, then to the left to be 0 0.8, that means that the value of 31 must be over to the right. So that is 0 0.8, that area. OK. Now, to use my calculator here, I'm going to use my calculator to work out the z value. OK. For that, you're using the standard normal. So... Go to menu, and then number 7, and then you're going to be using the inverse normal button. Okay, The area has to be 0 0.8, sigma has to be 1, and the mean has to be 0. You've got to use the standard normal distribution here, because we're working out a value of z. I mean, you can't put in the uh, mean, in this case, for the original distribution, because that's what we need to find. OK, your calculator can't do that for you, I'm afraid. So we should get inverse normal of 0 0.84162084. That's your z value. The x value is 31. The mean, we don't know. That's what we want to find. The sigma, well, we go to this distribution and we say, well, the variance is 64. So sigma must be the square root of 64, which is 8. So we need to solve this equation. So I'm going to have to multiply up by the 8. So 8 lots of 0 0.8416208476847 is 6.73296677. If I subtract that from that side and add mu1 to both sides, I can rearrange this. So 31, take away my calculator display, I get 24.26703322. Okay, so the mean is 24.3 to 3 significant figures. Well, if we go to a little bit more accuracy there, uh, 24. 27 to 4. Okay, and so that's how we can work out the mean. We had to use the formula, okay, in order to get that result. Right, so let's have a look at B. So this time, y is normally distributed with a mean mu2 and a variance of 200. So let's draw a diagram. There's mu2. So to the right of 1500 must be an error of 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 is quite small. For it to be on the right, that means that 1500 has got to be over here for that to be 0 0.3. Now, I can't look up 0 0.3 in my calculator, so I've got to use the left-hand error, so 0 0.7. So I'm going to go onto my calculator again, my inverse norm button. The error this time is 0 0.7. The standard deviation is 1, the mean is 0. Standard normal, remember. 
So we should get 0.524400438. And that's equal to x, which is the 1500. Take away the mean, which is mu2, over sigma. Now, in this situation, sigma squared, the variance, is given as 200. So sigma must be the square root of 200. So what I want to do is multiply the root 200 by the 0.524400438 So 7.41614. Uh, 2118 is equal to 1500 take away mu2. So if I subtract that from both sides, add mu2 to both sides, it's 1500 take away the 7.416, etc. And we get 1492.583858. So 1493 to 4 sig fig. Okay, and so that is the mean of the distribution for part B.